Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Now, a couple videos ago I showed you a little simple setup I made to try and determine the uh, possibility of gravity extracting the gold from the Mojave One Ore. Now, it didn't really depend on whether it was in the sulfides or free gold, just can I get a gravity concentrate that gets most of the gold into it. I just got my assays back today and um, in short it wasn't really good but I need to do a number of calculations to determine just how well or poorly the process actually worked. So first let me show you the setup I did before so you can see what we're talking about. Now right here I have several buckets with overflow pipes. Now these are used for something else so it was just a handy setup for me to cobble together. I started out with uh, ore from Mojave One. It was that uh, 40 feet from the portal lower working stuff that ran about six tenths of an ounce per ton. I only had about 10 pounds of it left over after other testing so that's I just ran it. The first bucket was where all the ore went and I took a hose and basically turned it on fairly slowly and just worked it around in that bucket in order to wet the ore and to start an upwelling going on to pick up the smaller lighter particles and move them out the outlet. From there it dumped into the second bucket where it just dumps straight in. This creates a, a stirring action so it's a more gentle upwelling it'd be a little easier for things to settle out. From there it went to the third bucket where I had a little gold pan there so it doesn't even impact the surface but just kind of goes out across the surface of that still water in the bucket to settle things further and then after that it ran out into other buckets with no outlet and I just kept changing the buckets until I had completed the test to my satisfaction. The material that started the whole thing before any processing was done is the head ore. This is what goes into the beginning of a mill, or it's known as the head grade. Then the stuff coming out the far end, through the process, it was real fine materials, just really floaty stuff. That is usually called slimes. In between is the stuff that was the, the heavier, larger particles of worthless minerals like quartz or felspar or limestone, whatever it is you've got there, known as the gang, and the heavy minerals, and hopefully the gold. Now if the gold is in large enough particles, if the rock has been crushed fine enough, then you will get a good separation and you can go from there. This was just kind of a proof of concept test to see whether or not I could get any kind of decent separation real simply with a small amount of ore. This was too small to run on my table. It takes like 30 pounds to achieve stability and loading and everything else. So I just didn't have enough material to use my table as the test. So the head ore was running 18.6 grams per metric ton or about 0.6 ounces per ton. The Cons were running 76.3 grams per metric ton, so that's almost four times as much. That initially looks really nice. In terms of grade, it looks fine, but there's very little cons to the head ore. The thing that really jumps out right away is the tails, the tailings, are still running 17.6 grams per metric ton. Right away, it just that was not a good recovery. And the slimes were running 10.9 grams per metric ton. So now I have concentrations, but I need to see how much of the gold went where. So for this we need to do a mass balance calculation. Find out how much actual gold is in each fraction, not what the concentration is. So the first thing you need to do is decide what units to use. Now if you're getting ounces per ton, then the unit of weight you would want to use is tons. 
On the other hand, this is in parts per million, which is grams per thousand kilograms or grams per metric ton. They're all the same thing. So in this case, I'm going to go with metric tons, which is a million grams, a thousand kilograms. Okay? So, we need to take the weight of the sample in metric tons. Well, you know, none of them were a metric ton, none of them were weighed in metric tons, they were weighed in grams. So what you do is you take the weight in grams divided by a million and that gives you the metric tons. It's going to be a small number in something like this. Don't worry about it, it works fine. So you take the weight of the sample in grams divided by a million and then multiply that number times the grade in grams per metric ton and it gives you the actual weight of gold in that fraction. So, we started out with basically 5,000 grams of head ore. We had about 4,400 grams of uh, tailings, 576 grams of slimes, and 113 and a half grams of cons. Now, here's a table showing you all the numbers as they calculated out. Now, you'll also notice that I double-checked by adding together the fractions after the processing with what there was before the processing. For example, when you add the weight of the tailings, the slimes, and the concentrates together, you wind up with 5,076 grams and I started with 5,094 grams. That means I didn't lose something anywhere in any significant quantity. That's good agreement. Now, if you look at the end columns, you will see the amount of gold and the percentage of total that each one is. As you can see, the tailings still have 81% of the gold in them, and the concentrates only have 9% of the total gold. Now, that's a lousy recovery, okay? If you had really rich ore, that would suck because you'd be throwing away an enormous amount of gold. If you have a lower grade ore, which this basically is, you just aren't making enough money to make it work, okay? This test bed did not do an acceptable recovery or anything even close to it. So the question now is, why didn't it do that? And is there something we can do to get the gold out? The first question is something called mineral liberation. Do we just not have the ore crushed fine enough? I don't think so. This particular stuff was pulverized through the impact mill and it was running over 50% 60 mesh minus. That's usually going to get you a fairly decent recovery. It ain't happening here. Also, if you look at the slimes, which is the very finest of the gang minerals, it's still running 10.9 grams per metric ton. This would indicate either you've got to pulverize to, to an enormous amount, like 400 mesh to get liberation, or else the gold's just so, so fine, it just floats too easily and it just doesn't want to gravity separate. This can happen. You can have very, very fine gold or you can have fine gold distributed through the rocks so well that you just can't really break it loose. In that case, you're going to need to leach it. I'm looking like we might have to leach this stuff. I really don't want to. I'll go into that decision process in the next video and a little of the theory behind that. But this is how a mass balance calculation occurs. It's very simple mathematics. Make sure you don't get confused on your units or when you're dividing or whatever. Um, just to double check yourself, you can go simple. One ounce per, you know, whatever ounces per ton it is, you should be able to do your calculation. If you had 2,000 pound sample, it should give you that amount in ounces. Run your calculations, it should do that. If it doesn't, you're doing the wrong calculation review the video and see what you did wrong. Now, another possibility might be bad assaying. I use 
a professional assay lab, these guys work for the big boys. Uh, the negative is it takes me like a month to get my results back and I have to have a $300 minimum. The good news is it's about $20 an assay. And in this particular group of, of assays, which was about a dozen assays, they ran three standards and did four duplicates, all with good correlation. So because of that professionalism and cross-checking, I can be pretty confident that these numbers are pretty darn good. Also, because of the high quality of the agreement, it also tells me this is some fine gold. So I'm, I'm looking at probably this is such fine gold, it's not going to recover well. Um, uh, with some other ore from this prospect, I did run 72 pounds over my table and I've got that material sitting over there on the shelf ready to send off and the larger amounts out back. And I think what I'm going to do to try and determine is it liberation or is it just really damn fine gold is I'll take some of the 60 mesh minus product, I'll split off a sample, and I'll screen it to 100 mesh very, very carefully using a wet screening operation. If we've got good liberation, then the coarse material should have very little gold in it. The, the gold, if it's just really, really fine gold that's, that's floating away, it should be less than 100 mesh. It'll go through the screen, and I should be able to get a pretty low ore grade in that 60 to 100 mesh product. If I don't, we're just looking at a serious liberation issue, and that gets pretty expensive if you're trying to do a gravity separation. Not so much on a leaching, but I'll get into that in the next video. So that's how you do a mass balance equation. That's why it's important. It tells you where your gold went, what your total recoveries are. You can't do that by grade alone. So I hope that's helpful. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.